Hello and welcome again to RC Model Reviews and today I have a very large box of telemetry stuff from Free Sky. They've sent me a heap of stuff here to review. So that's what I'm going to do. I think what we'll do first of all is have a look at all the little bits and pieces in close detail. Let's take a look first of all at the telemetry hub. Now this is the airborne hub into which all the other sensors plug in. You notice it's quite a small unit. I've put Velcro on the back so it's easy to mount in the model. And there are a whole heap of connectors down the side of this thing. Um, we've got, uh, what have we got here, GPS, Vario, uh, voltages, RPM, all sorts of other stuff, and a data port, all sorts of things. So this little device here can take all the information from the various sensors and then send it off to the receiver for transmission back to the transmitter. And of course the receiver is pretty important too, and this is the, the new D8R2+. Plus. This is the latest telemetry enabled receiver from FreeSky, the, it's quite a flexible unit, I've flown it, it works and um, your telemetry ports are on the side here, you've got a port for analog data uh, for, and batteries and so forth and then the digital data port for connecting up to the hub or a digital sensor if you have one. That's the key to the whole thing, one of these antennas transmits the signal back to the transmitter on the ground or the transmitter module on the ground. And this is the GPS module. Now as you can see it's actually not that small. I was a bit disappointed in the size of this thing. Look at it, it's quite thick. There's actually two boards and they're spaced apart with heat shrink over them. Compared to some of the GPS units used on some of the OSDs and FPV stuff, this is a, quite a large unit. I was hoping they'd do something a lot smaller for smaller models, but no, nah, that's what you get. Um, unfortunate that, but never mind, it does work, as you'll see in the review in the flight testing. Uh, and that's the GPS sensor. This plugs into the telemetry hub via this little cable here, of course. There's a lot of cable on there, so you can locate this in a useful position. I used Velcro, stuck it on top of the model, no problems with it. Although I did notice in testing that sometimes it took an inordinately long amount of time to actually capture some satellites. One stage there was 10 minutes. So it doesn't have a little battery backed up almanac inside or anything like that. And it is quite slow to capture the satellites, which if you just want to go for a quick fly and have your telemetry going with GPS, Bit of a downside, so they could do better with the GPS. Here is what is possibly the next most useful sensor, and that's the Vario. And why is that so useful? You might think, oh, what do I want a Vario for? I mean, after all, I don't want to, I'm not a glider pilot, I just want to know how fast I am, how high I am in battery voltages. Well, the Vario is essential if you want to get altitude information, believe it or not, even though FreeSky provide sell you this nice little Jeep or nice right, rather large GPS unit. It doesn't give you altitude. If you want altitude, you've got to use the Vario. I mean, how stupid is that? It's a, I've spoken to FreeSky about that. They've sent me some new software, which may change that. Maybe the new version. I'm going to update it shortly, and there'll be a follow-up to this review. But at the moment, the GPS unit, even though it sends back altitude information, it doesn't display on the screen. It only displays barometric readings from the Vario. So no Vario, no altitude. Bit of a shortfall, I thought. This little piece of wire here is the temperature sensor. In fact, it's actually a little, it's a twisted pair of wires and on the end there, there's a little thermally sensitive device and like a little glass package. So that'll tell you your temperature if you want to know that sort of thing. Um, if you're going to be using it to measure the engine cylinder head temperature on your gas or your nitro motor, it's probably not a very practical package design. You have to squeeze it in between the fins if you can. Um, it'll measure the temperature inside your plane. But remember again, a good Vario unit, if you've got that Vario sensor, it should have a temperature sensor in it as well because temperature affects the Vario reading. So I would have thought that um, this might have come in a better package and it's redundant if you've already got the Vario. It should be redundant if you already have the Vario. But again, you don't get a temperature reading unless you buy the temperature sensor, even though you should be able to extract it from the Vario. Uh, it's like there's been no thought about how these things might work together and what people might use. If you want all the readings, you've got to buy all the sensors. So hopefully that's going to change with the new software I'll be testing shortly. This is quite an exciting sensor, although you're probably not going to be able to use it until they put logging in the telemetry system. It's the triaxial G meter or, or accelerometer. It'll tell you how many G's you're, you're pulling in any of the three directions. That's sort of back to front, left to right, and up and down. Now, this little unit is, as I say, it's, it has a great deal of potential, but it's not very practical at the moment because there's no logging, so you'd have to be watching the screen on your transmitter to see how many G's it was pulling. Probably not that practical if you're pulling 9 G's near the ground to take your eyes off the model. So it's a good idea, but they've got to have logging to take advantage of that because those high G readings will be very short, very brief, and unless you're looking at your transmitter when they happen, you'll never know they did. And here is the current sensor for electric flyers. It's got a big 100 amp current sensor here. It's got current in, current out, 
and your data lead that goes off to your uh, receiver or your telemetry hub. And there's another plug here that can go directly to the receiver. So you don't have to use the hub with this one. It can plug directly into the receiver, I believe. Uh, it's got, this one's got Dean's connectors on it. I suspect they'll have to make one with uh, XT60 or just leave it open so you can fit your own connectors because there's so many different types of connectors now that you can't just rely on people just to use Dean's. So this is a prototype one. Apparently there's going to be a few changes. The label will be nice and professional instead of being inkjet printed. Um, so that's it. I'll be testing that and see how that goes on larger models. Um, again, until you've got logging, this sort of stuff there is only marginally useful because you might as well you know, just check it on the ground once you get in the air. You don't have time to look at the transmitter. I keep saying that, but only because it's really important. Now here's the cutest little sensor they sent me. This is quite cool. I like this one. It's just, a, you know, these little things you put on your LiPo and it tells you how many volts are in each cell, how many volts are in each cell and how many volts your LiPo is. Uh, this is one of those. In fact, if I plug it into a LiPo, here's one I've prepared earlier. Oops, it's not quite ready, so I'll have to... Here we go. If I plug this into the LiPo here, making sure I get the polarity right, ground at that end, like so. Oh, bit hard to do when you're old and feeble and your eyesight's not so damn good anymore. See, that's... Turn it over. Oh, look, it's showing the battery voltages. I'll turn it up the right way so you can see. This is a little OLED device. That's organic light emitting device, not organic light emitting diode. It's an organic light emitting device. It shows the different three different cell voltages here so you can see what they are. But uh, you can buy these things to use on the ground and you plug them in, check your battery pack. But this is even better because it has a data port here. So you can plug it in, as the lead comes with it, plug it into your telemetry hub. Or you can daisy chain it with another one of these and read up to, because this will do six cells. In theory, you can do up to 12 cells, although they tell me the software is not quite ready for that yet. But you could have two of these up to 12 cells and it's got the little display so you can check it on the ground and in the air. Now you've got to ask yourself is it worth carrying the weight of that display in your model just so you have this extra fancy feature. Well if you don't want it they do have a standard uh, data voltage sensor that you can use without this display but this sort of doubles up. You can use it standalone or with the telemetry thing and the little OLED's quite cool. It's quite legible even in quite strong light. So that's I like this little thing. It's not expensive and it seems to work really well. Now, of course, we assume that we've got all these sensors hooked up to that hub and it's come back through the receiver and it gets down to your transmitter. You've got to be able to display the information. And here is one of the telemetry display dashboard things. It's got an LCD. It clips onto your transmitter. This plug here will plug into the back of your telemetry enabled module or inside your transmitter into the DIY, telemetry two-way DIY system. And it will show a whole lot of information on here. It's got little buttons you can click and push to do different things on the top change menus and stuff, I think. Um, yeah, it's got little buttons. So... That's the cheapest way to get the telemetry back onto your transmitter. But there is another way. And this is that other option. It's the DHTU, I think they call it. It's a complete dashboard and transmitter module in one. So you don't need a DIY kit. You don't need a two-way transmitter module. This does the job of those. And it has an antenna jack on the top because obviously it's a transmitter and a receiver for the telemetry. And this just clips onto your transmitter. And this little lead here plugs into the module jack in the back or you can wire it directly onto your transmitter's uh, circuitry inside if you want to. Now, it has little buttons on the top here, which you can use to select the menu options, and a little flippy switch on the side, which goes up and down. Quite nice and simple. It has a reprogramming jack. You can actually plug in a USB connector and you can reprogram it to update the software, which is absolutely essential because the software changes quite regularly with this new stuff. You need to be able to update it. In fact, I've got a version 3 of the software or a new version of the software I'm going to be uploading into this sometime very shortly and I'll probably do a video on how I do that so you can see. Um, so what, we're, what I've done now is I've put this on top of my old IMAX 9X transmitter, plugged in the module, plugged it into the module slot and I put the telemetry, I just put basic telemetry, I've got the GPS and the Vireo on my AXN and so let's go and see how it works. I'm outside now and I've got the transmitter, the telemetry module installed on the transmitter. This is the, uh, what is it, DHT-U or something or other. Anyway, it's installed on the transmitter and you notice I put this little camera mount here so that we can see the telemetry dashboard because I don't have a camera mount so I've got to be innovative. That's what I've done there and on the AXN itself all the gizmos are installed either on the top here or inside the canopy and I put the keychain camera on here so that we can compare the keychain footage from the model's point of view to the telemetry dashboard output and hopefully you'll be able to see the correlation between the two. So let's go fly this thing and see how it actually works in real life. Let's look at 
the altitude figures first. I'll take a climb up to 400 feet, whereupon the alarm should go off, and we'll see what it looks like. There we go, the alarm is sounding. Come down a bit. The alarm should go off. There we go. Right, so that's the altitude figure. Altitude seems to work. If I do a dive it should respond pretty quickly. There we go, of course it's always got some bits and pieces that change because of the effective air pressure within the canopy of the model. So the roller light changes as I swing around for a landing. Right, now I'm going to change the dashboard to the next screen, which is what? Oh, why isn't that changing? Oh, is it this one. Here we go. You haven't used this much. Here we go. Now we're looking at, <coughs> the figures we've got here are the important ones, and I'll just get to the home, because we're a long way from where it was made at the moment. So, there we go, I've, I've zeroed it. This is the number of miles from where I launch, and here is the speed in kilometres now. And you notice it's, it's saying 0 0.4, 0 0.2, that's just a bit of jitter. You get that with GPS, I'll just adjust the camera. You get that with the GPS because it has a certain amount of jitter which produces erratic readings when you're very uh, stationary. So, and these are our GPS coordinates, of course, east and south. Up here we've got our accelerometer, but I haven't got that fitted. We'll fit that later and see what it does. Well, let's go flying now and see how fast we can get the old AXN to go, according to the telemetry. I guess the first thing to do will be to climb up. Do a bit of, let's do a little bit of cruising around first. There we go. As you can see, we're doing a healthy 27 kilometres an hour. It's not very fast, I'm just slowly tooling around. A little bit of throttle, not much. Nice, slow, turning around up to 44 downwind, because it's got a bit of wind today, but 50k into the wind. So let's see what this will do, shall we? Let's crank it up, get a bit of height, do a really fast downwind run. There's a little bit of wind, I don't know, maybe about 7 or 8k, not very much. But let's see what this baby will do. It's got a lot of drag from the telemetry, so that'll slow it down a bit. Let's see if we can get it really honking. Oh, we've reached our altitude limit. around again because I'm following the model of course. Back into the wind, we won't be too fast into the wind. Seventy six K into the wind. I do a big climb now. Speed drops off in the climb. Of course you can't use this for stall speed because it's not airspeed, it's actually ground speed, as measured by the telemetry. Let's go a bit higher again and get a real dive out of this baby, see what it'll do. Altitude should kick in shortly. Look at that. Altitude alarm means we're 400 feet. Now I'll do a real big sweepy dive, see what we get up to. That's how fast we can go and how slow we can go today. Actually, the wind's just about dropped right off now, so you might not be able to get it to go very slow at all. Just cruising overhead, try and slow it right up. Oh, it's starting to drop a wing. That's as slow as she's going today, fill up elevator. Yep, that's it. Right, so there's our basic, uh, basic telemetry, as you can see on the screen. What I'll do now is I'll do a landing and we'll see how long it takes for the speed to spool down on the landing because that's the judgment of the, the latency between the measurements arriving 
and I'll just bring it in quite quick so that we can stop it reasonably fast. Okay, it's stopped now. 17, 3.9. So you see there's around about two second latency in the speed indication, which isn't much better than it was, but it's probably not as good as I'd hoped, although speed probably is not that critical. And there we go, that was the flight test of the telemetry, with just basically the GPS and the barometric sensor. But I know what you're all wanting to know, how many G's can we pull? Well, let's, in the next video I'll be connecting up the triaxial G sensor, and we'll see how many G's we get out of the AXN in a vertical dive, full power, with full up elevator at the bottom. If you've got any questions or any suggestions as to how many G's we'll get, put them in the bottom of this video. What do you reckon I can pull on the AXN, and will the wings survive?